So today we're going to discuss, discuss significant figures. I know you had it in chemistry. This is just meant as a review. I'm not going to hammer you on significant figures. Um, if I ask you to put data in a lab report, I might check to see if you're fairly close to the significant figures that it needs to be. So as you know, significant figures are the digits that contribute to the precision of the instrument, accuracy of the data. There's three rules. Rule number one. The number of significant figures is the number of digits to the right of the first non-zero number. So if we look at this example, how many significant figures do all of these have? Hopefully you got the same answer. One, because you can't count those zeros. Now, this is just meant as an example. If you were measuring a cup of coffee and you added 0.05 milliliters to it, and you had to report the data, should you report 200 milliliters or 200.05 milliliters? Well, you can only report data that's no more accurate than your least accurate number. Okay, your least accurate number was is this, with one significant figure, so you have to go with still 200 milliliters. Can't add any more significant figures. Here are some exceptions to rule one. The zeros to the right of a whole number are not significant. So 40, 500, 7,000, 7 million, they all just have one significant figure. 420, 7,200, 85,000, they all have two significant figures because they have two numbers. The zeros to the right are not significant. Exception number two to rule number one. If the zeros are sandwiched in between the numbers, then they are significant. So 402, 1,040, they all have three significant figures. One, two, three. I kind of like this chart. It has some good examples on it. Exception number three to rule number one. Gotta love science. Exceptions here. If the number has a decimal point, then the zeros to the right of the decimal point are significant. So 12.0000 has one, two, three, four, five, six significant figures. Again, I like this. I'm not going to read it to you. It sums it up fairly nice. Rule number two, if you add or subtract, the resulting numbers cannot have any more significant figures to the right of the decimal point. We're, and I know Mr. Amos kind of taught you to line them up, and I probably should have lined these up on the uh, notes here. You know, these are lined up. So if we look at this, though, 21.3.232 equals this number, but we can't have that because we only have one digit to the right here of the decimal, the tenths place. So we have to round it to 21.1 because that's the only, that's the significant figure there we have to go to. That's the least accurate one, right? And kind of disregard this last, this kind of goofed kids up. This was in the books. I thought I'd put it in there, but go with the decimal point, okay? Line them up, go with the decimal point. When you multiply or divide numbers, the answer cannot have any more significant figures than the values in the calculation with the fewest significant figures. Okay, now, I, the book and the class were in disagreement on this problem. This is a problem straight out of the book. So here's what I would do if you gave me this problem. I'd accept either answer. Do I know which one's right? I don't know. I want to go with what the book says, but I agree with what people in class the other day were saying also. So if we do this multiplication and then division, this is the answer we get. However, if you look at the original problem, this, the fewest significant figures would be one. These zeros don't count, right? So kids in class were saying, really, this should be rounded down to 10 because there would only be one significant figure in 10, correct? Because the zero doesn't count. However, the book gives this answer, 13.6. I think they're going off of this uh, number here. Which one's right? I'm not sure. You look on one website and they'll tell you one thing. You look on another one, they'll tell you another. So, uh, but all the numbers, in, if, they, if you go with what the book says, would have three significant figures, at least this number and this number, okay? This is kind of a handy too. If you add or subtract, see how they lined it up. You can't have any more significant figures than what's to the right of the decimal point in the least accurate number.
So we would have to round this to this because that's what is there. If you look at this one, we can only have one, two, three, four out to the right of the decimal. So we have to round it because that's the least accurate. It's the one that has the fewest decimals. If you multiply or divide, then you go with the least number of significant digits. Okay, so this one has one, two, three significant digits, but this one has just two significant digits. So we gotta round it to the two significant digits right there because the leading zeros don't count. This one, okay, here's your answer you get, but since this one has three significant figures, it rounds to 535 because then there's three significant figures. And that's where we're going to stop. Now, I do have a homework assignment for you over significant figures. It's on my big campus. Um, I'll show you how to get there. And if you have trouble or you want to compare answers, what I told the class is if you're off one, I'm probably not going to cry about it. You know, if I say you've got two and you can argue one or three, it, I guess it just depends on what you're trying to argue. Uh, if you're way off, then I'm not probably going to count it. Okay, But again, they're supposed to be hard, fast rules, but I found exceptions all over the place. One website would say this, and another website would say that. One book would say this, another book would say that. So why am I teaching you? Just as a review, it's supposed to get you an idea that your data has to be only as accurate as, for example, your least significant figure. 